In this lecture, I will cover linear wave theory and also how we can estimate wave pressure at any position under the wave. Where can we see waves? We usually know main parameters at the location of interest. Usually these are the water depth, the design wave height, and the wave period. Depending on the problem, we need to answer various questions. For example, what is the wavelength? No matter what the problem is, you always need to calculate the wavelengths. Or what are the pressures under the wave? Or what is the energy in the wave? Or how much power is transmitted? Or what are the velocities and accelerations of the water particles under the wave? Because these are required to calculate forces acting on a structure. To answer these questions, we need a wave theory which describes the flow field within the wave. There are a number of different wave theories. Different wave theories are applicable to different conditions of wave steepness and relative depth. And wave steepness is defined as the ratio of wave height divided by gravity and divided by wave period in power 2. And relative depth is defined as water depth divided by gravity and divided by wave period in power 2. In our lectures, we use linear wave theory. Strictly speaking, linear wave theory applies to conditions of low wave steepness and high relative depth. Most problems of practical interest do not fall within the linear wave theory regime. However, linear wave theory can give us results which are good enough when used outside its strict region of applicability. In addition, linear wave theory is the simplest theory and is the best starting point to develop good understanding of wave mechanics. All wave theories, linear or not linear, are based on potential flow theory which means that this is theory which describes ideal fluid flow and this is when flow is considered to have zero viscosity and also the flow is incompressible and irrotational. On this slide I show you an example of a graph that shows regions of validity of different wave theories. On this graph we see linear wave theory and also nonlinear wave theories, higher order nonlinear wave theories such as Stokes, second order, third order, and fourth order wave theory, depending on combination of wave steepness and relative depth. You choose the theory which is applicable for your conditions. And as you can see from this graph, linear wave theory applies to low wave steepness and also high relative depth. I will show you a few examples of nonlinear wave theories. For example, Stokes higher order wave theory, which describes steep waves in relatively deep water. And these waves have high sharp wave crests and elongated wave troughs. And they look like this. Another nonlinear wave theory is sonoidal wave theory, which describes finite amplitude waves in shallow water. And these waves have elongated troughs and higher rounded crests, and they look like this. And also another nonlinear wave theory is solitary Boussinesque wave theory, which describes a single long wave in shallow water. And the wave profile is completely above still water level, for example, tsunamis. And this look like this. Designing a wave energy converter, you need to answer various questions. For example, what is the wave pressure? What is the wave energy? Wave power? And what are the forces acting on the structure you are designing? Use an unsteady Bernoulli equation for potential flow, and this is the flow of ideal fluid, so zero viscosity, and flow is also incompressible and irritational, and also using a linear wave theory, pressure under a linear wave is expressed as shown on this slide, 
So we have pressure is equal dynamic pressure plus hydrostatic pressure below steel washer level. If you take outside of the brackets product of density multiplied by gravity, you express pressure as shown on this slide. So Kp multiplied by eta is dynamic component. And I will remind you that eta is just the water surface elevation at particular position at any moment in time. And Z is hydrostatic component below steel water level. And product density multiplied by gravity is just specific weight. And Kp coefficient can be determined using this equation, which is hyperbolic cosine and under hyperbolic sign, we have wave number multiply, and in brackets we have Z plus water depth. And here we have hyperbolic sign and product of wave number multiplied by water depth. So K is just the wave number, which is calculated as 2 pi divided by wave length. So units for wave number is radians per meter. So to estimate pressure under the wave, we use these equations. So let's have a look what pressure would be equal to at Z equal zero, so still water level, and also Z equal water depth. When Z is equal to zero, Kp would be equal to one, because here if we substitute zero instead of Z, we have hyperbolic cosine Kd, and here hyperbolic cosine kd so kp would be equal to one therefore substituting one here we have pressure would be equal rho g eta because z is equal to zero and at large depth when z is equal d we have minus d plus d because you remember z is negative below still water level Therefore, here we will have zero, and therefore it will be hyperbolic cosine of zero. Therefore, Kp would be equal to zero. So in this case, pressure would be equal minus rho gz. So we know that Kp changes from zero to one, and in this case, pressure at particular point below the wave would be changing from minimum to maximum, where minimum is determined as shown on the left hand side and maximum is determined as shown on the right hand side and at a minimum is the water surface elevation above a particular point of interest and at the maximum is maximum elevation which would be when we have crest above this point so pressure varies from minimum to maximum as shown in these equations on this slide Let's do a practical example to better understand how pressure at particular location below steel water level varies. We already know that Kp changes from 0 to 1 and pressure varies from minimum to maximum. Assume we have this setup. We have seabed. We have point X, which is 5 meters below steel water level. And please remember that Z below steel water level is negative, so it's minus 5 meters. And we have above this point waves passing with wave height of 8 meters. So we need to determine how pressure at this point X varies. And we, using this equation, we can write that the pressure varies from minimum to maximum. And maximum would be when we have wave crest above that point, And minimum would be when we have wave trough passing above that point. And at the minimum is minus 4 because wave height is 8 meters and at the maximum is 4 meters. So we can calculate pressure limits from 10.1 kilopascal to 90.5 kilopascal. And maximum pressure would be when we have wave crest passing above point X. So eta is equal to maximum or 4 meters. And eta is equal to maximum or equal to amplitude, which is half of wave height. Let's do a practical example to better understand how we can estimate the wave pressure under the wave. So we have waves with height of 7 meters and wave period of 16 seconds traveling in a water depth of 150 meters. And we need to calculate the maximum wave pressure at depth 15 meters below the sea surface. 
So I show our setup as illustrated on this slide. So we have point X, which is 15 meters below still water level. And we need to estimate the maximum wave pressure at this location. And we already know that the maximum wave pressure would be when we have crest passing above this point. We can take seawater density to be 1025 kilogram per meters cube, and this is all our data provided. So what equations we need to estimate the maximum wave pressure? First, of course, we need equations for the maximum wave pressure, which would be calculated as shown on this slide. So in this equation, we need to estimate Kp and we need to estimate at the maximum. And Kp is calculated using this equation. And for this equation, we need to estimate the wave number. And wave number is just 2 pi divided by wavelength. So we would need to estimate the wavelengths. And at the maximum is just the amplitude or height of waves divided by 2. So we need to estimate the wavelengths. We start with deep water wavelengths equation. And this is estimated as gravity multiplied by wave period in power 2 divided by 2 pi. And this is equal 400 meters. And now we need to check if indeed it's deep water wave. Now we need to confirm if it's indeed deep water wave. And for this we need to estimate the ratio of the water depth divided by wavelengths. And this is 0.38, which is less than 0.5. Therefore, it's not deep water wave, it's intermediate wave. And we need to use full equation to obtain wavelengths, which is in this case 393 meters. And the maximum wave pressure is calculated using this equation. So we need to estimate Kp and also at the maximum. And we already know that at the maximum is when the wave crest is passing above. And to estimate Kp, we need a wave number. So we calculate wave number as 2 pi divided by wavelengths. And now we can estimate Kp to be 0.791. And therefore, we now estimate the maximum wave pressure to be equal 179 kilopascal.